fish number five, I think. It's literally been at five, ten minutes. So it's, it's been hard to keep two rods in the water at the minute. Um, nothing massive as of yet. But you, you're but catching. All, all good fun. <laughs> yeah. They put up a good scrap as well. What have you got on that rod? What, what rig setup have you got? Uh, solid bags, fish sort of just past the pads, fairly tight to the island. Little short KD rig with a little trim down uh, pink R1 pop up. Been one of the bigger ones I've had so far. Scrap well. Yeah, it's been up a good fight. Yeah. He's in. In the net. That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Little tiny roach. Look at that, yeah. Oh, another one. Another one. <laughs> You'll be live baiting soon. <laughs> Not massive, but all good fun. Yeah. It's another, yeah, another fish on the bank, I'm happy with that. Another one bites the dust. Exactly. Pretty little fish. Yeah, nice looking. Let's get him back and hopefully catch his mum. What's that, six again? Yep, so I think <laughs> six, five or six. So, so I ain't even managed to get the rod out from the last fish I had. Ripped off again. Not even, not even five minutes each fish really, isn't it? No. <laughs> It's mad, so as soon as you're putting it out, they're getting straight on the solid bags and off they go. As long as you're catching. And there she is. They do quite well, don't they? You've got a lot of energy, yeah. these fish. Hoping we sort of get amongst some of the better stamp fish at some point. I'm sure we will. Plus, go break your PB this, this <laughs> yeah, weekend, right? It's happening, it's gonna happen. So, do you, do you like having it on back wine then? Do you? Yeah, I just find I'm, I'm sort of more in control with it back wine now give them exactly what I, what I want to give them, not what they want to take. So you get a few situations where if they're heading for the snags and you don't need to stop them. If you, if you have got your clutch, they can sort of play with it. If you yeah. literally, I just fish my clutch locks and fish everything on backwind. And then once, once they're out in the open and away from danger, then they can have as much room as they want to play with. That's on the little pink one, isn't it? Yep, yeah, yeah, all of them, all solid bags. Got the scratting pellet in there. Um, some crushed receptor TT. A load of uh, krill liquid. And just left it soak. And it's, it's, it's obviously doing something, right? Well, there's five other anglers or so on the lake and they've not caught a thing. We've had no. one fish, I think, from them, one guy. Yeah, there's, there's not much been out, I don't think, so. Well, that's because you're on. having them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come on and sort of have a few is it, nice. Yeah. I'll just see your line pull up a little bit there. All right. It's going. Yeah. Margin one. I think it's still recording there. You might want to focus that bit. Right, Mike was just filming me landing my fish. Yeah. All of a sudden. A bit of carnage here. His rod's ripped off. First. First ever fish at Wylands. I've not done carp fishing for a long time. 
I don't want to go across that line now, actually. I'm enjoying it already. So that's not a bad fish. Yeah. It's definitely put up a good fight, so. Oh, he's come oh, off again. Oh, no one likes to <laughs> see that. I'm oh, well. You, mate. Oh, well, it happens, don't worry. We'll get it back out there. Damn it. <laughs> so after my dramatic loss there, <laughs> which we, th look. we think it's quite a good mirror, isn't it? Yeah, it, it didn't look like a bad fish. It definitely one of the better ones, I yeah. think. Stupid pulling, losing the fish. Oh, well. And what have we got here, common? Uh, I'm not sure, it's, it's a scom... Uh, a scom... Uh, common, but it, it's got massive scales. I'm not sort of, sort of bordering on line of like a fully scale mirror, yeah. but... We'll have a look in a minute. Another nice little fish, lively as anything. Yeah. But proper old warrior, that one, I think. That is, isn't it? I've seen some fights. Yeah. Still, another fish. He must be nearing double figures on fish at the moment. Seven or eight. Yeah. I'm starting to lose count, I think, at the minute. We, we, we've lost a few as well, so... I just want to be able to get both rods in the water. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it this time. Get both rods in. We can we try. <laughs> Right, something a little bit different. I sort of want to try and get away from the smaller fish. So hopefully, as you just lost a good fish down the edge, so I'm going to go down the same route. Um, I couldn't walk my rod down with this one because of the, the tree there. So what I've done is I've flicked it round the tree onto the bank and I get get hold of the line and come round and drop it in by hand. Well, by landing it. <laughs> <laughs> so all I've done is, it's quite an easy way of doing it. If you put, put it through the V, you can push it basically to where you want it. I literally just just want to lower it. Lower it in. So it's tucked up right in the margins there, isn't it? Yep. Let's get it off these. Yeah, no, no snags for anything to get snagged on. There's no snags in between me, so it's all safe fishing. Okay, and it's, it's, you've got a free swim down here, yeah? so nine times out of ten the fish get right in on the bank. Right in, like literally earlier, those crashing just off the bolts. So, something a little bit different rather than just fishing to the island like everyone else. A little bit of pellet over the top, I know I've got a bag there, but a little bit of traction in the area. Get them grubbing around. Hopefully that's a fish. Wasn't even five minutes. We we did manage to get all four rods out there. Yeah, for about <laughs> two minutes, <laughs> and then it was off again. Well, we're definitely getting the best fish action on the lake so far. Yeah, so I mean, just by doing that little bit different. Yeah. I was at home all night last night preparing the bait for us. Just the extra little edges that you give yourself. Gotta make it work for you. Gotta make it happen. Exactly. At this rate, we'll either be running out of PVA bags <laughs> or bait. Yep, that's come out of the net. Joys of barbless hooks. Yeah. And there's that pink. Is that the R1 there? Yeah, the yeah. little washed out pink R1. Cut you, down. So and why have, you, why have you trimmed that like that? Just to critically balance it in the bag. I just want no weight. All it does, just sits above the hook. Yeah. And buries home as soon as the fish sucks in. <laughs> Lovely bar of gold. That is a nice fish. I'm not going to break no records, but when they look like that, it doesn't yeah. matter. Nice tail on it. That's where they get that power. Yeah, streamlined little little torpedoes. What a fish. Let's hope I get one now. I don't think it would be long. Got 
that you rig right down in here. Just spread a bit of bait over the top, get them rooting around again. Just cover the whole area. Just a nice bit of smell. There's not really too much for them to eat down there. Just grabbing around, searching that. And hopefully they come across your pink hook bait. It worked last time, so hopefully it's going to work again. Let's hope so. The pellets soaked in that cruel liquid really well now, and you can you can see the, the sort of boily crumb there. It's nice and fine, and all it's going to do. There's, there's not loads for them to get the reds on. It all breaks down to more or less nothing, but it just leaves that scent behind, and it sort of penetrates the silt or the clay or whatever really you're fishing over. And it just keeps the fish coming in and rooting for more, rooting for more, and that's when they make the mistake and pick up your hook bait. And by fishing solid bags over the top, you're just basically replicating exactly what comes out of your spawn. And use your lick it and stick it. Quick and easy, and you can cast that a fair way. Uh, I lost the first one, put it straight back out, and off it went again. Well, that's, it's fan. Snagged? No. Uh, I think it was on something, it's pulled free now. That last, how did that last one come off? You said it hit twig or something? Uh, yeah, what it, I think what had happened is it just picked up a bit of debris off the floor and just sort of masked the hook point. So obviously it's run with it and there's nothing sort of anything to prick it. Plenty a little one again I think. Oh the bites are dried up. I think it's time to introduce some more bait. So out comes a trusty spawn. A little little handful each time. It's clipped. I'm not really baiting a tight area, I just want that whole general area to have the scent and the food signals coming off it to get them sort of moving out of the pads. And so if you can get them out and get them feeding, like I did in my swim, you can sort of put it any, any one of them, well, anywhere in that general area and they're, they're going to pick it up, which is good. So how many spawns do you put out normally, is it? Um, does it depend on the, the conditions or...? Yeah, you're taking the conditions, how well they're feeding and sort of... Basically, it, it's the stock of the lake. If you know you've got a big head of fish in there, you, you can afford to put that little bit more in where if it's a low stock pit or something like that, you might want to just fish for a bite at a time. But at the moment, we've got a lot of fish in front of us. So we really just want to get them feeding. We want them competing out there. You need basically get to that sense of security where nothing can go wrong. So then that's when they slip up. Kicked him in a feeding frenzy, didn't it? Let's see if I can land this one. <laughs> <laughs> He's not kicking as much, so there might be a bigger fish. Just goes to show that adding that little bit of extra bait can. Just can, instantly. Yeah. I mean, that was what, four spawns? Probably yeah. five spawns? And now that, that bait's been sitting there for what, 45 minutes for yeah. an hour without any indication. Yeah. As, as soon as you start, start getting the feed going in again, they're back on it and away you go. If it doesn't happen, make it happen. Exactly. I can see fish rising over there as well. So I mean, just getting that little bit of food signal back in the area, yeah. just spurs them back on. Don't need to fill it in, just just enough to get them rooting around again. That's the noise as well you were saying, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes? yeah, I think they I think they're drawn to sort of they know it's free food there. Quite a nice fish. 
by my standards. It's not a bad fish at all, mate. Yeah. By anyone's standards. <laughs> And she's oh, in the net. And he didn't blank. <laughs> well done, mate. Awesome. Ah, oh, there we go. It feels big to me, Tommy. I know it's it's not huge by your standards, but that is that's a chunk to me. That's a totally awesome that, fish. That's a mate. totally awesome carp. Absolutely chuffed with that. We're we're going to weigh this one, I think. But what a fish! Look at the scale. Perfectly scaled, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say it's probably the biggest of the trip so far. That's a that's a great looking fish. What an awesome fish. That was over by the lilies as well, that one. Just as Tommy was spawning up there, getting some feed in, they just completely switched on. The, the rod was quiet there for about 40 minutes. And we just, as soon as we started putting that bait in, the noise, the activity, everything switched on. So it goes to show, guys, if you get, if you get some quiet spells, do something about it. Don't sit there doing nothing. What a cracker. All right, at the moment, the truth. This is it. We said about 12 or 13 pounds. A 12 and a half. Lovely. What a cracking fish. Definitely chuffed with that. 12 and a half pounds. Nice common carp. And they do scrap well here. I'll just hold them up one more time here. There we go. What an awesome fish. What a stunning fish. That is an awesome fish. Look at a paddle of a tail on it. Let's get those baits back out. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do this. Right, Mike's just had another lovely fish. Um, to show you a bit about what like the rig that's doing the damage, really. Just got your, your standard sinking rig tubing, which keeps everything nice and pinned out of the way. And it helps, especially if it goes in the pads, it's a bit abrasion resistant there. Got a two ounce inline lead. That helps with the um, solid PVA bags. A, sh a short hook link going, going down to a KD rig with uh, one of the trim down pink R ones. And the, re the reason I trim it down is just to make sure it's critically balanced and keeps everything sitting nice and right. And as I say, we we ain't really, as, although Mike lost one earlier, it's sort of everything we've hooked has been bottom lip and good hook holds. So let's, let's get the solid bag on the go. Just, just your standard solid bag, little one. You want those? Just a little bit of pellet in the bottom in the bag mix just to base it out and goes the rig okay, make sure that the hair is separated from the hook correctly all I do is just hold the lead against the bag gives you a nice little bit of room to just drop some bait in as I'm doing that I just want to push it all down get it nice and compact Keep adding. And then when this breaks down on the bottom it creates a nice little patch of bait. Just just a mouthful so when they come in they hover it up, in goes your hook and away you go. That's nice and compact. Bury that lead in it. What you want to do, that's the whole reason for the inline leads, is where you've got the insert and the tubing you can literally pull the bag up to the top, give it a twist. A little bit of spit, and he'll lick it and stick it, and that's your finished rig. Ready to go, you can put that almost anywhere, and you can catch five pound fish on it, you can catch 40 pound fish on it. Brilliant little method, good to nick a bite or two. Let's get it out there. Little good tip to sink your line is, a lot of people pull down to the lead, but you, you can move your lead that way. If you take off some slack and just Pull it and just use your rod against it. So all you're doing is just taking up the slack with a rod. And all it does is puts a little bit of pressure on the line and nothing on the lead and just gets it nice and sunk, pinned down to the bottom and out of harm's way. Right, we're gonna put the, the line in the line clip. Give that little bit of tension for when the fish picks up. And then on, on goes your bobbin. Without pulling the line out the line clip. Job done, alarm switched on. Now wait for the next run. Well, it's been non stop action, hasn't it? It has been non stop. Another fish in the bag, though. 
They all count, mate. They all they all count, that's for sure. There we go. Another one bites the dust. I hate to say it, Tommy, but it's looking awful quiet over in your area. Yeah, it is. I think I'm... <laughs> Don't start worrying now, I think. I've just caught something big, guys. Uh, Tommy, went, Tommy went to go get something from the car, and uh, I've, I've had a couple of taps on his buzzer. Couldn't resist. I went over to the bite alarm. Nothing else happened from the bite alarm, but I was watching the line, and it's just slowly, slowly twitching away. So I hit into it, and I've only gone and landed a 20 pound carp. What was it, Tommy? 20 and three quarters? 20 pound, 12 ounce. 20 pound, 12 ounce carp. My PB carp is an absolutely stunning common. Absolutely, this is totally awesome, guys. That is, that's a Tommy flower special, that is. All that of Tommy's, is, mate, all, totally of Tom, awesome. all of his, all of his, all of his tips are paid off here at Wylands. That is one ridiculous carp that I'm completely over the moon with, and I shall remember forever because it is my first ever twenty. So yeah. cheers, Tommy. It's a pleasure, mate. It's been absolutely blinding. What so a cracking fish! That is stunning. Absolutely stunning. I'm over the moon with that. I can go home now. <laughs> I don't have to stay overnight, <laughs> but we will. We'll fish out through the night. See what we can get, but what an awesome fishery, awesome fish. Quality. Cheers, Tommy, mate. Yeah. For a day ticket water, you can't really get much better. No. He wants to go, he's gonna go. There we go. Off we go. Oh, what a beaut. That's, I'll have a drink now. <laughs> It screamed off again. So we're just getting dark now. I don't, I don't think don't think it's a massive fish, but it's gone it's gone a bit quiet in my swim after wax twenty. But it's, it's nice to get another run and know that they're still there. So I just literally just put the rod back out. Probably been in about less than five minutes. It, it just goes to show that they're homing in on the splash and that, that's why the spawning's helping. So it's sort of when things do go quiet, recasting every now and again, especially on sort of pressure day tickets with quite a big head of fish. It, it, it just if they're used to like the noise bringing food, they're going to home in on it. And obviously the, the rod's been in there minutes as most of them have today. And straight away it's just rattled off. Not quite as big as Mike's. It doesn't matter, mate. It's another fish. Oh yeah, I've been piling them up so today. 10, 11, something yeah. like that. Yeah, you got you Couple definitely won the numbers, Gabe. <laughs> and and no one else is uh, seems to be catching. Do you reckon that's a bait thing? They're not. Baiting? I don't know. It, we've got quite a big feature in front of us with the um, lily bed and that, and there's fish sort of moving in in and out of it all day. And I think just putting a bit of bait in, doing something a bit different, it, it, it tends to help. After that uh, eventful night with the the one carp that we had, but a um, bit, bit crazy really for, for such a small carp. But we're going to change things up a bit today, where I am anyway to start with. Um, Tommy's recommended I go for a dark, a darker bait this time, hook bait. So we've gone for the the black, these receptor negative gravity, I think they're called, aren't they, Tommy? Yeah, I think that one's based on sort of black tiger nuts. That's it. Yeah, they've got a nice nice smell to them. These ones, though. I could almost eat those. So I'm going to try one of those on the hook. Still going to use the pellet and uh, crushed boily PVA. And then um, maybe later when it warms up, we might try and get on the old dog biscuit and bread and go really old school. But we'll chuck this out. Tommy's had one just now, literally bag barely hit the, <laughs> barely hit the water. And uh, he had one, lost one, and then uh, had another as soon as he hit the water really. 
So it's, it's, it's the noise that's doing it, I think. We'll chuck a few bags out and see if we can get a few more big ones. <laughs> you minutely look away. I oh, know. <laughs> He's in first thing in the morning. <laughs> Day two. So I just put the rods back out again. Solid bags. That's been in there about five minutes, if that. And off it goes again. Unbelievable. Well, I might have the numbers on this one, but yeah. wax definitely had the size. <laughs> I'll be handy to get another another big one, be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Beggars can't be choosers, though. Yeah, my ones are getting smaller and your <laughs> ones are getting bigger. Yeah. Fish number. Well, Fish like number, I've it. lost count. Yeah. It's in the net. Yeah. And that'll do. It's going to be one of those days again. I think it may be. Nice looking fish though. Yeah, pristine condition, all of them have been absolutely minters. And they, they proper scrap, but with a paddle like that, <laughs> I'm not surprised. That's a great fish. Been a brilliant weekend so far. It has been absolutely awesome. You've been in less than, only, you know, well especially you, you've only been here 24 hours. Yeah? No. How many fish are we on? Oh, we've had over 15, I'd say. Yeah. We've had over 15, up to 20. <laughs> Good fish. Out there. Well, let's get us on back and get the rods back out. Right, just just reeled the rod in. I'm going to put a no bag on it. Put it back on the spot to get some more bait in the area. Quick tip: when when you ray cast, you'll see the lead still wet, there's bits of the bag still on it. Just want to make sure you you dry it off. Me being lazy, I just use my sleeve instead of a towel. But it just takes some moisture off and stops that bag from splitting when you put it in it. Get get it dried off. Even even the line, sort of your hook link material. You want, don't want no moisture in there at all. As soon, as soon as it gets wet, your bag splits. It's going to break on your cast, and it's just a pain, really. So get everything nice and dry. If it and just to get all the excess off, especially when you're fishing crumb, if you just drop it in and cover it all over. Sort of the crumb takes all the, the moisture and st sticks to it, so. Just dries out a little bit more. And you're ready to go in the bag again. Another crazy fish, but it's worked. And that is another another good looking cart, really. Good Just, good scrap on this one, didn't it? It's real. Yeah, really. He Even went, though they're little, they're proper hanging on. Yeah, he went for it, but the tails on all these fish I've noticed have been mint condition, haven't they? All of them, sort of scales are perfect. Really good you condition. You get a lot yeah. of like day ticket waters with a mass of bit of mangle, but no. all of them have been absolutely minters. Really good fish. So we're getting about 8.30 now in the morning. We've already had three. So we could be in for a, a long, well actually probably a short day at this rate. We'll get through our bait first. But good little fish, we're getting back. Get the rods back out there. See if we can get a bigger one. Do it. Well, the, the bites have dried up at the moment. Just trying everything, spawning again, and they're, they're just not having it. There's plenty sort of showing near the top and sort of milling around the pads and that. So I think instead of sitting on the bottom, catching nothing, we're gonna switch over to some zigs. Hopefully try and winkle one out that way. Well, for the zigs, we're gonna use the zig aligners. Brilliant little bits of kit there. It makes zig fishing a lot easier than it was before. Right, you want a sort of size 10 wire gate. I, I like the smaller hooks, they weigh less. You get the bigger the hook, the, the more sort of buoyant your bait's got to be. So you can get away using a fairly small bait. Tie your hook on. That's a, is that regular what blood knot there? Yeah. Bit of spit just to pause there nice and tight. Trim the tag end. Okay. 
and then with the little zigger line all you, all you want to do is just pull that over so the idea of that is to keep the bit of foam basically a nine keep it all yeah, it, it, sort it, of, tight to the hook or something yeah it keeps your bait tight to the hook and also sort of creates as if you're using like a liner liner on a normal hair rig it just gives that little bit of extra kick on the hook as it sort of helps it turn and find its way home and yeah. given the conditions today how how sort of what sort of depth are you going to fi fish this bit of foam what do you think um with the amount of sort of activity we've got on top and just in front of the pads the sort of it's, it's roughly around four and a half five foot deep so i want to fish it sort of an inch or two under the surface and just sort of get them put it in their path and hopefully they're, they're going to pick one up right and see the that's the zigger liner keeps it nice and close to the shank all, all you want to do now is you just hand a little gadget you get your coloured foam we're using the pink one so we'll go with the pink foam you do push that in and then that goes through through the ring of the liner work its way on which then oh I see it's pinched it in isn't it yeah because yeah. you'd never be able to sort of try and squeeze it in so it's a brilliant little bit of kit trim that off And that's basically your finished article. So that just literally just floats there in the water column and any cruising carp, which we're, which we're not getting off the bottom at the moment, so it's likely to be do something different, isn't it? Just Yeah, uh, as I always say, if, if it's not happening for you, do something to make it happen. Yeah. Um, we, we've tried and we've, we've changed the colours of our baits, we've spotted more out, we're regularly recasting, and earlier it was going off every two minutes. And then it's just died. I think they've mo they've moved up in the water, and they're, they're sort of we put some dog biscuits out earlier, and they're, they're coming up for the odd one, but there seems to be more cruising. So I'd, I'd just start getting the actual mixers out and try and float a fish them. I just want to put something in the path and sort of grab the curiosity really. And yeah. Hopefully that will do it. And that line there is that normal m m like mono? No, what that, is that line? That's uh, that, this one's the um, called a cruiser control. So, so basically, it's a, it's a floating mono. Floating line. Yeah. It, it, it's it's got it's, it stays really straight and it, it's it's for your float of fishing. I use that for my zigs and, and my float of fishing on top. And you can basically let's see in the twelve pound. It's, it's still fairly strong. We've got obviously you got the pads out there, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Right, we ain't, we ain't got too long left here today, so instead of sort of reading it and changing the lead over, all I've done is brought the rig in. Top one rig off and tied the zigs straight onto the old lead, the two ants. Still got that pinned down, and all we're going to do is just flick that out. So the lead's going to be on the deck, and this is going to be sitting mid water above it. Hopefully, we can nick a quick bite before we're off. We're plugging away, we've been trying everything. I thought, I thought I'd give them another hit of bait, get the spawn working, the rest of the sort of pellet mix we've got left. I've put one right tight out and managed to nick a bite, which is blinding. All we need now is it's, it's only a tiny one, but this is probably going to be my last fish of the session. Hopefully Mike's going to be able to nick one as well. So I'm going to quickly get him to stick two rods on this bait. So, um, it'd be nice to sign out with both the last fish under our belt. They fight all the way to the net, don't they? Yeah, they don't like giving up. Two awesome carp. 
We've had a cracking session, haven't we, Tommy? It's been absolutely blinding. It's been shed loads of fish. Ridiculous. And to top it off, is your new PB of £20. Yeah, pound. £20 pound PB. Over 20 fish, I'd say, as well. Been a really quality session. We've showed you some tips in there as well. Tommy's given you loads of tips. Hopefully, you'll take some of those on board and get out there, guys.